So I had a dear friend help me set up for the feet washing ceremony on Holy Thursday. And so as the friend was helping me to set up for the feet washing ceremony, she said to me, how do you want me to fold the towels? How do you respond to a question like that? I mean, I know I'm kind of a control freak, but when it comes to how the towels are folded for Holy Thursday, I, my response was, well, just fold them the way you fold towels. You can figure it out. Just fold the towels. Are you ready for this? This is one of the towels she folded <laughs> for Holy Thursday. Isn't that so incredibly thoughtful? Think about it. Think about it. How do you fold your towels? How do you fold your towels? Now, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead? But I need you to put into your mind that we can know a lot about people by the way they do things. So please, just think for a moment of those you love. What are those things that they do that when you see them, you think of them? What are those things that they do that when you see them, you think of them? Is it maybe the way they fold their towels? Or the little hand towel by the, by the sink, the way they fold that? Or is it the way that they maybe wrap your sandwich when they make you a lunch for school? Or is it maybe the way they set the dinner table? Or is it maybe the way they always leave their dirty slacks right in the middle of the floor? <laughs> it's so them. Because when you think of those things and how there are certain things that the people we love do things that reminds us of them and only them, then you'll get a better understanding of today's gospel. Where we are here in the gospel of John chapter 20, verse 6 through 8, when Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Like my dear friend, I guess Jesus rolled up his towels too. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. There was something very special about those claws that helped them to experience what? The risen Lord. Because when the women arrived at the tomb, they looked in there and they thought, ah, somebody took the body. Somebody took the body of Jesus. And that's what they were telling everybody. Somebody took the body of Jesus. But wait a minute. The two people that hung out with Jesus a lot, do you think that maybe they ever noticed the way that Jesus folded his cloth, folded his towels, folded his, I don't know, did they have napkins back then? Probably. What was it about the way that cloth that was on his face was rolled up 
that said to them, no, somebody didn't just come and take this body. That cloth was taken off by the one that was wrapped in it, folded in a very particular way as only Jesus would fold it, rolled up and set aside from the burial cloths. And when they saw that, they believed. But the challenge is, in our English translation, we see that Peter saw and that John saw. But we need to look at what would this gospel have been in the original ancient Greek. So when Peter saw... In the original Greek of the gospel, thare, to see with a physical sense in a closer and more careful, vivid and instructive gaze. Peter saw signs of deliberation, choice, and care in the placement of the cloth. So G Peter saw with his eyes. In the ancient Greek, thare. He saw and noticed that these claws were in a special way. That these claws, Jesus. But in the ancient Greek, John saw. John saw in the original Greek of the gospel, Adam, to discern clearly attend to and to experience not merely in a physical sense but to see with the eye of the mind and grasp the truth which lay beneath the placement of the cloths John saw and believed John saw and believed John went deeper than just the physical arrangement to the clause. Fine, Jesus did that. And believed that Jesus was risen from the dead. So when we look at the ancient Greek, how Peter and John saw can help us to see. To help us to see beyond the physical, to see with the eye of our mind. Because when we do that, we can see the risen Christ in our experiences today. In our experiences today. And not just see in a physical sense, but see in the mind of our eye. So the question is, how can we see deeper meaning in our experiences so that we may come to believe in the power of the risen Christ. And so, when you open up your lunch that mom made for you, and you see the way she wrapped your sandwich, do you see the deeper meaning, the love with which she made that sandwich, the love that she has for you, the love that she wrapped it. The love of Christ coming through her. Now, I admit, it's not as easy to see Jesus in other things, like the dirty socks on the floor. It's kind of hard to turn that into an experience of Christ. And yet you can. When you can see the dirty socks on the floor, you can lovingly think of your family member that's so inconsiderate, and you can turn that into a moment of prayer. God help them to clean up after themselves, will ya? You can find Christ even in that experience, because, I mean, that's what I did when I wrote this story, hopefully. My whole goal was to baptize the bunny. That's what I wanted to do, was to baptize the Easter bunny so that people could see through a bunny, Jesus. 
to see not just in a physical sense, but to go beyond the physical sense and to see with the eye of the mind in that experience, the risen Christ. And so today, we are being invited and challenged to see and believe, to see in the experiences of our life, to see in our relationships, to see even the most unexpected ways and believe that the risen Jesus is present in each and every one of our situations, is present in his risen form in all our experiences. Let us truly celebrate this Easter as a way to see and believe. Were you taking notes during my homily? <laughs> He's being a good deacon. Okay. <laughs>